everybody welcome back and today I want to revisit some CSS for a little bit um, I had some questions about how to do uh, links as unordered lists and why you would even want to do that and uh, let's look at what I'm talking about real quick um, if you remember an unordered list simply let's go to the HTML is a list of bullet points okay when I use it and I have simply put my links in each one of them now there's several reasons this is a good best practice to do first of all if you for some reason somebody's viewing this on a browser and this browser and they don't have a style sheet or something like that it does delineate them as a group and puts them on here and kind of separates them the, from just plain textual content so it's a good best practice just with no styles to have as flat navigation if you have to go that route uh, but um, most of us that are designers feel that this is really not that groovy to look at. Um, and really, what the, the other reason I like to do is it, it will link them, it will group them together. But the other thing you can do, you're going to see in a second when we go through the, um, the CSS for this, is it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can actually turn these into what are probably looking more like buttons. Um, you can add graphics to them, style them, things like that. So let's, uh, let's get started, and I'll show you how I have this set up. First of all, it's real simple, basic HTML layout, and uh, in the body I have simply an unordered list. That's the UL tag here. And inside the unordered list, I have four list items. That's what LI stands for there. And inside each one of these, I have a link. Link 1, link 2, link 3, and link 4. Now, um, really what we're going to do is some advanced stuff, because by default, these are all block level uh, display items, uh, meaning that, uh, let's go back over here and I'll show you that uh, block level, remember there's two types of, of display for HTML elements. There's, there's block level items and there's line level items, okay? Now block level items will stack vertically. Line level items will all appear on the same line, okay? So for instance, uh, if you think about just, you know, if you're styling just text, um, you know, paragraphs obviously are block level because they force a line break between each paragraph, whereas something like the span tag or the bold tag or something like that is an inline item because it will just fit on the same line with all the other text. You don't want a line break there. Okay, so by default, list items are obviously, because it's a list, they are block level, so they are stacked on top of one another. Okay, so if we want to style this, our object here is to make these horizontal and be able to change their widths and heights and adjust all these wonderful things. So let's go back over to our CSS and what we're going to do, I'm just going to put this right in the head of the document. So let's use the style tag. Style type equals text slash CSS. And let's go ahead and close that out before I forget to do so. Uh, close the style tag and there we go. Now let's drop down in the middle here and let's add some styles. The first thing I want to do is let's take the unordered list UL and I'm going to go ahead and set the margin to be zero and also the padding to be zero. Okay, let me stop real quick and say that right now for our purposes here, I'm using, I'm just targeting the tags in the CSS, so UL, LI, and the A tag is what we're going to be working with here. If you are actually using this in an HTML document in a real web page, uh, you probably want to use classes to set this up, and the reason I say that is because uh, as it stands, if I, if I just tell this to affect all the tags, it will affect every tag on the page. So every unordered list you have on the page will, <laughs> will look like your menu. Um, so you probably want to avoid that by, by doing it this way, uh, or by using classes or even IDs. Okay, so let's just keep going here. So we've styled the UL tag, we've taken out all the margin and the padding distances, and let's go ahead and let's style the LI tag now. And what I'm going to do in here is, what we're going to do, the first thing, is to change the display. So let's say display. Now remember by default it's block, we just talked about that, let's change the display to inline. Okay, let's save that and let's go over and look at what, what happens now. Okay, you can see that it took away all the bullet symbols and it put everything in line. Okay, um, if you wanted to style your list and change the bullet symbols, you can certainly do that. It's called the list style type, and we're not going to cover that here because we're working on turning, turning this into a menu. But by default, once, this, once each list item goes to line level or to display in line, it takes away the uh, symbol next to it. So, okay, so far so good. Um, now, what we're going to do is add some style styles to the A tag, the anchor tag. And let's go ahead and set up, remember there's four states to any link tag, and let's go ahead and, and we're going to set up the first three just as one style because I don't really care to uh, spend the time to do four different ones. But let's just go ahead and say A colon link, comma A colon active, these are the states, A colon visited, and uh, let's spell right visited, and 
We'll do the hover in a second, but let's go ahead and deal with these first three as a lump. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to be able to control the height, width, margin, all that stuff and have this work out. Now, this is gonna seem kind of counterintuitive, but if you look back over here, you can see that there is a line space, or not line space, a character space, just a space between each one of these links, link three and link four. There's just a little bit of space there to separate them out. Okay, so that's kind of my first clue that, that um, and if you don't know to look for that, I'm telling you to look for that. It's our first clue that we need to uh, work with the link tag here. So what we're gonna do is member links by nature are, um, or the a tag is an inline element. Okay, so you can put it in the middle of a paragraph and it won't create a line break in the paragraph just for the link. It'll just display it right in line. What we're gonna do, first thing is display colon block. Okay, now you're probably thinking to yourself, why the heck did I just do that? Because I just told the li to display in line and you're probably right if you're guessing that it's gonna do this and so refresh the page. Now they're going to have line breaks between them because I've told the a tags not to be on the same line. They're gonna be block elements, okay? Okay, so what do I need to do? But I've done this because I wanna be able to control the height, width and all that and I need to get that out of an inline context um, to do that. So how do I get back to being a horizontal navigation? Well, the answer is this. Let's drop another line. We're gonna tell them each to float left. And uh, let's see, display block, float left. So basically I had to tear this down and rebuild it up again to do, get this to do what I want it to do. Now if I go back and hit refresh, and you can see that yes, now they are in line, and look, there's no space between each one. Here's link one, link two, and look, look how they just jam up right next to each other. That's good, that's what we want, okay? And I'll show you why. Now you can go back and under the link tag, we can continue to add styles, and they're all pretty obvious here. Think of them as being little divs now, um, because we've done a lot of work with div tags, and uh, how you can, remember these are all floating left, so at this point, what I can do is I can give them all a margin. Margin of, let's say, uh, let's go with 25 pixels. And now, when I come back over, you can see that there's a margin all the way around, top, right, bottom, left in each one. So I've got them to breathe now. There's space between them, okay? Okay, so now we can continue to do things. Let's, uh, let's go down here. Let's give them a background color. Uh, color of black. And let's change the text color from blue to, as the default, to white. And let's also go, uh, let's just get, we'll, we'll get a little designy here. And we'll go ahead and say text decoration and let's say you're gonna be none and we can put the um, underline on the hover state or something like that so let's go back over here refresh and here we go now i got a background on each one of them i've got um, uh, the the colors change now i just realized and i didn't intend to do this but i'll show you how to correct my mistake notice i want these to be black all around i want them to look like buttons and i have a lot of white space in here that's because i used margin and not padding so let's just change margin over here to padding and now you're going to see the real magic. Okay, now they're gonna be a little more like buttons. Now I can add margin in there too if I want them to breathe a little bit. I could put a one pixel margin in there, something like that. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Margin is gonna be one pixel. And now they have just a little bit of breathing room in between each one of them. So you can start to make these look like buttons. You can also use the height and width attributes on these. Um, you can center your text, you can justify it, things like that. You probably don't want to in the case of buttons. I think this is the most simple way just to do a button and have the text be in the middle of the button. Um, but you might uh, consider also you can bring in graphics as a background image and you can change those on the hover state. So it's kind of a way of doing, um, you know, uh, what used to have to be done with JavaScript only, you can now do with CSS, which is kind of nice. Um, so let's go ahead and create a hover state for these. Let's go down and let's do one more style down here. And this is gonna be A colon hover, uh, except no space, sorry. Hover, curly braces. Now let's say uh, background color, it's gonna be blue. And let's say the text decoration is going to be underline. Okay, now let's go back over here, refresh, and now you can see when I hover the mouse over, they do turn blue, and maybe I like that, maybe I don't. But now I'm starting to take list items with links inside of them, and now I've styled it so instead of being a list of bullet points that looks kind of weird for navigation, I've turned these into what look more like buttons. Uh, I'm not crazy about these. I would probably finesse them a little more, and they would also be dependent on, uh, you know, their look and feel would be dependent on the overall design of my website. Um, but for our purposes here, an example, that is how you take a list of links and style them. Uh, one last time, let me repeat this too. You can see what I've done here for our purposes in learning, and I would definitely go through and practice like 
like this. If you know you don't have, you're never going to have an unordered list on your web page, you could probably get away with doing these styles exactly. But just know that you might want to set up classes for these or even ID tags because this is going to affect every unordered list on the page. So if I want in my text to have actually a, a list of bullet points, they're going to end up, wind up looking like this because I've used uh, the tag um, as my target in the style sheet. It's going to do every tag on the page. But for our purposes here, um, just learning this, that's, um, that's all you need to do. And I'll just review here. First thing we did is we took the unordered list, we zeroed out the margin and the padding. We took the list item, told it to display in line, so that took away the bullet points and put them all horizontally. Then you have to deal with the link tag. I had to go backwards because if I don't, this margin doesn't work, this padding doesn't work, none of this works. So I have to tell it to display block. That forces it to work, but then they're vertical again. So I want it to work, but I want it to be horizontal, so I have to go in and say float left. So that's kind of, you got to do it and undo it to, or undo it and do it to, to get this to behave like you want it to. Otherwise, your padding and margin are going to have problems in here and you won't get those to display correctly. So anyway, I hope that was helpful and uh, we'll see you next time.